Good evening, ladies as well as gentlemen. I'm Papa Boris here, playing some more chess, and I'd like to show you in this video a game by a player who is oddly underrepresented on YouTube. His name is Mikhail Chigorin. When you look at the channels that I watch on YouTube, so uh, King's Crusher, Agadmator, and Chess Network, all three of whom are excellent and I highly recommend, it's strange how few games they have of Chigorin, and the game that appears the most often is actually his loss against Marozzi, who uh, is a player I will also show at some point, which was Marozzi's Immortal Game, and it's a great game, but I'm just surprised that there aren't more games by Chigorin. Uh, again, that's not a criticism of anybody, it's just a surprise to me. Chigorin was a player in the second half of the 1800s, he was a very romantic player, with an almost comical disregard for his own king safety or for any kind of material. He played a very exciting kind of chess and was very good. Uh, we all know that Wilhelm Steinitz was the first world chess champion, but do you know who he played against to win that title? Uh, that's right, Mihail Chigorin. And it wasn't like a runaway either. Chigorin was actually down just a single point at the end of the match before Steinitz found a second win and won three games in a row. And actually, Chigorin challenged Steinitz again several years later and was actually up a point at one point in the match towards the end before again losing three games in a row. So it's possible that Chigorin just had a stand stamina slash endurance issue, and that was why he kept losing these matches at the very end with several games in a row. So really, he was about as good as the world chess champion. This guy was not to be messed with. Now, a lot of times when you look at these older games of the greats, they're, the games are against some nobody, but uh, Chigodin's opponent in this game, Emmanuel Schiffers, was a great player. In fact, he was Chigodin's teacher, and he was the Russian champion for a decade before he lost that title to Chigodin. So, uh, a game between two strong players here. Chigodin opens with e4, and after e5, knight f3, and knight c6, we have d4, the scotch game. Uh, Schiffers decides to accept this exchange in the center and plays bishop to c5. There are some advantages to black in this opening. One is that you get to make this developing move with a tempo because the white knight in the middle here is actually attacked. There are a couple different ways to deal with the situation. One is to take on c6, but you go ahead and elects to make his own developing move, bishop to e3. And Schiffers plays queen to f6, piling up some more attack on this knight on d4. One of the ideas behind queen to f6 is that white's best reply here is c3. And c3 is not exactly a move that you want to make. It's not a pawn push that you want to make in this position. Because normally what you do with c3 is you're trying to support a pawn push to d4, but that already happened. And the pawn on c3 is blocking the white knight on b1's development to its most natural square, where it would be eyeing these two central squares, d5 and e4. So there's um, some logic to queen to f6. It provokes a weakness in white's camp. So at this point, black develops his knight, white develops his bishop, black clears the way for the light squared bishop to be developed, and then Chigoyen, of course, because he's Chigoyen, plays f4, signaling a desire to play an aggressive game. This is not a move the engine likes a whole lot. Uh, if you look at Chigoyen games, I don't think there's like a single one where at some point or other the engine just doesn't completely hate the move he made, and that also makes Chigoyen in a way even more of an impressive player. He's often just playing in like a losing position or, or at least a disadvantageous position, yet somehow manages to fight his way out of it. Here, Schiffers played queen to g6, uh, attacking the g2 pawn, so Chigorin defended it with castling, and this is a move not to be made lightly. A lot of times in chess there's a common theme where if you get the queen opposite the white king, or the black king, pinning the g pawn, you can go bishop to h3, and then oftentimes white has to stop this threat of checkmate by pushing the g pawn and losing the exchange. However, here, after bishop to h3, Chigorin could just play queen to f3, which holds the fort and attacks the bishop. And now white would have an advantage because black lost a move and now he has to push his bishop back since there's really nothing he can do at that point. So Schiffers did not play bishop to h3. He played the other tempting move in this position. Queen takes e4, yeah, there we go. So a uh, pretty ballsy move by Chigoyen castling here, giving up a pawn, putting this bishop under threat. This bishop was already a little bit dodgy because the pawn moved and it's opposite the black bishop, and it's undefended, so Chigoyden's just like, yeah, whatever, man, I got this, and he plays rook to e1, protecting the bishop, and putting the black queen, and also the black king, opposite white's rook. So Shivers is content here just to pop his queen back to g6, having gotten a pawn, but this was a bit of a misplay. What he should have done is actually taken on d4 first, 
And now there's nothing super scary about, well, okay, it's scary. It's, it feels very scary to let white recapture with an attack on g7 and, you know, attacking the black queen, but it, it's okay. Black can go to g6, protect this pawn on g7. These two knights are protecting each other. So black's gonna be able to castle pretty soon and he's just up a pawn and everything's totally fine. It does take balls of steel to play this way, you know, to uh, voluntarily give white the attack on the queen. I think Chigodin might have played that move, but Schiffers was not that kind of player, so he just moved the queen back to g6. Now, you might be thinking, but, but, but Boris, hold on. If you're moving the queen back to g6 anyway, what does it matter if you take this knight first? Well, if you don't take the knight, then, then the knight is available to play knight take c6, and this does get somewhat awkward for black. If you retake the knight with your knight, then white plays bishop takes c5, which is check, it's a discovered check. And so now you have to deal with the check, white's gonna retreat the bishop, and white's up a piece. So that's not good. If you take with the pawn, then white will also take on c5, and this is just nasty because now black has the dreaded triple pawns, which is really not what you want in a chess game. These are all weaknesses, and white will be able to exploit this and just have a field day. On top of that, this knight is pinned by the rook, and black can't even castle right now, so it's really just an ugly situation. Schiffers decided to deal with this by taking on e3 with check, but then after rook takes e3, yes, black does get to take on c6 without this exchange happening with the bishop on c5, so the pawns are like uh, an, an L shape instead of tripled. But the rook is up a rank. It went from e1 to e3, and so now Chigoyen puts his queen behind the rook and attacks this knight. So how are you ever going to castle here as black? Well, Schiffers tries queen to f6 to protect the knight, and Chigoyen just calmly plays knight to d2, just developing his pieces. You're still hogtied here as black. You still can't castle because this knight is going to fall. So Schiffers decides to try to disentangle here. He plays d5 kicking back white's bishop, the bishop goes to d3, and then he plays bishop to e6, blocking this attack on the knight with this protected bishop on e6. Chigodin's attitude is fine, and he plays rook to f1. And so now there's ideas of f5. If you were just to castle here as black, then white could play f5 here, attacking this bishop. If the bishop moves, the knight drops. And so if you take the pawn with the knight to get the knight out of the way, then um, as white, you could play something like bishop takes f5. Now, if bishop takes f5, then there's g4. And this bishop is pinned by white's rook to the queen and can't move, so black is going to lose a material here. If you try bishop takes g4 here, after queen takes g4, you know, white is up a piece. Black does have three pawns for the piece, so technically the material is equal, but white's rooks and queen are pretty active, and there's these open files against the black king. So it's something that a lot of people aren't going to want to go for, and Schiffer certainly didn't want to go for it, so he played g6 to stop that pawn push. Now here, Chigodin's like, all right, I'm, I got black to make a weakness, so I'll just keep on developing, and he plays knight to b3. This is very solid because now the knight is going to come into c5. The b pawns and the d pawns for black are no longer available to chase that knight away. This knight would need three moves to challenge the white knight on c5, and this bishop's a light squared bishop, so it can never challenge the knight. So this c5 is just a completely entrenched position that cuts into black's territory and is a great place for that knight to go to. Here, Schiffers finally decides to castle, thinking, yay, now I'll be safe. Right. Uh, Chigodin plays g4. Like I said, he doesn't really care too much about his own king safety, so he's just pushing pawns, trying to break open the black position. And now black makes a somewhat subtle mistake. He plays rook a to e8. And the thing is, what black needed to do here was play queen to g7. If you're wondering why queen to g7, what's, what's the reason that this needs to get played, is that after rook to e8, white can actually push f5. And now after g takes f5, white can take back on f5, and it's surprisingly awkward here. If the bishop moves to d7, white's knight comes into c5, threatening to attack this unprotected bishop. And if this bishop moves again, then white actually just triples up, this is known as in the Lohen's gun, um, on the e-file with both rooks and the queen, and then this knight is going to fall. 
can't be protected, and if it moves, well, then this rook falls. Um, so that's a problem. If the bishop moves to c8, then white just makes the battery right away. The point is you got to get this bishop off d7 where it's protecting the rook on e8, and once it's not protecting the rook on e8, the knight can't move and will fall. And finally, if black just straight up takes on f5, this is almost like the worst possible situation, then white takes on f5, at the moment white is up a piece, and if black tries to regain the piece, well then white simply gets this rook uh, on the back rank and it's all over. So, uh, that was the move that Chigoyden needed to have made here, was f5. And notice that if black were to play queen g7, then f5 shenanigans don't work, because after g takes f5, this pawn can't recapture, it's pinned by the queen. So that's what Chigoyden, or that's what uh, Schiff first needed to do, was play queen to g7. And after he didn't, Chigoyden should have played f5. Chigoyden, however, missed it, which I can't, you know, blame him. It was the 1800s, it was an innocent time, and uh, it was it was difficult, you know, for anybody to play all the most precise engine moves that we can just see in our browser nowadays. He made a move that is totally fine. White is still better here after knight to c5, just developing his knight to that square. Here, Schiffers played d4, which is probably the first real mistake of the game. What he needed to do was get his ducks in a row, and get rid of all this pressure on the e-file. Maybe just play bishop to c8 and uh, get the bishop out of the firing line from the f5 square, get it out of the way of the knight, try to disentangle the situation here with this knight on e7 and the rook behind it. The problem with d4 is that now after g5, she go ahead and gets an extra tempo against the queen, and uh, then he can make a really clever sacrifice. The thing is, uh, here... Schiffer's compounded upon his sorrows by playing queen to h8. This makes it even, this makes Chigoyen's job even easier, as we'll see later. He should have just played queen to g7. There's really nothing that the queen does on h8 that it's not also doing from g7, and from g7 it would be protecting f8, and it would also be adding some lateral support. So all of this um, makes it easier for Chigoyen to play his next dashing sacrifice, rook takes e6. Before I examine this move, though, I do want to give Schiffer's some credit. Let's go back to this position here. A lot of times in these games, you know, we're biased because uh, we know who won, and it's some famous player, and so we're inclined to look at all of the famous players' moves as really great, and all of the losing players' moves as, you know, dumb, boneheaded bananas. I do want to give some credit, though, to Schiffers for this move d4. It's a very clever move, because what Schiffers was probably thinking is that if this pawn is recaptured, then uh, Black actually has this rather crazy tactic, Bishop takes g4 attacking white's queen. And if the bishop is recaptured, then black plays queen takes d4, forking the rook and the knight and getting back his material. If white tries to protect the rook so that he loses the knight instead, then things get really, really bad with uh, knight to d5. And now this rook is pinned to white's king by black's queen and the tables have been completely turned. This e-file that was such a problem for black is immediately now become a problem for white. So, give credit to Schiffers for spawning all of this, it's just that unfortunately for him, Chigoyen saw what was up and saw a much better plan. So after g5, the queen tucks back in a little bit too far, but regardless of where the queen would have gone, whether it was g7 or h8, Chigoyen is going to deal with this threat on his rook by capturing on e6 and giving up the exchange. Now, here, uh, the sacrifice was taken. If it's not taken, white is just up a piece. So you gotta take the rook back if you're gonna have any hope of things. And now white plays queen takes e6 with check. Uh, here, if you play rook to f7, things get a little bit uncomfortable because after bishop to c4, notice there's no black queen here on g7 protecting that rook. So the queen has to come into g7 to protect the rook. Um, notice that, by the way, the black rook can't defend its buddy because then white's gonna win a piece back. Notice that uh, that rook on f7 is pinned and can't recapture. So after queen to g7, white has queen to d8 attacking this rook back here, and things get really uncomfortable, because now again the rook can't move or else the piece is lost, so black would have to go to f8, and then white would play knight to e6, which humorously enough traps the black queen. So uh, perhaps this is why Schiffers did not elect to play rook f7, although it is worth noting, black is lost here. It's just a matter of how he chooses to lose. Schiffers tried king to g7, and then Chigoyen got a pretty nifty idea. He played rook to e1. 
Whatever Chiguanin's idea was, Schiffers either didn't miss it or just didn't know what else to do in this position. There's pretty much no way for Black to develop his position in any way. If he tries to break free with something like knight to d5, then White can play queen to d7 check and pick up this rook on e8, say, uh, the, the rook blocks, then we just take the rook. Um, if the king runs back to g8, then we can also take the rook this way, and then the, from here, black's not only down material, but is going to get mated at some point. So, uh, Schiffers just, I guess, didn't see a way to develop his position, and made this do-nothing move, d take c3, basically saying to Chagodin, you know, can you find something to do, because I don't. And Chagodin did have something to do. He played queen takes e7 check, because what game on this channel would be complete without a good old-fashioned queen sacrifice? First, Chagodin sacked the exchange, and now he's giving up his queen for a minor piece. Now, what does black do? Well, if he plays king to g8, then he's getting mated in short order after bishop to c4. Checkmate, much like winter is coming. And so, uh, Schiffers tried rook takes e7, accepting the sacrifice. Now, after rook takes e7, it's surprising how hogtied the black king is. There's really not much for the black king to do. If the king tries to run to f7, then after bishop to c4, the rook has to block a silly move, and then we have rook to e8 check. The king comes up to g7, and then knight to e6 is a very picturesque mate. So Schiffers tried instead of putting the queen back to, or the king back to g7 to block with the rook, but now this bishop on d3 isn't even needed. Chiguanin plays knight to e6 check, only move is king to g8, and then the rook just goes to e8 check. The only move is rook to f8, and then rook takes f8 is checkmate. Hope you enjoyed this game. Please like and or subscribe if you did, and I'll see you again soon. Take care.